It gives me great pleasure to welcome President Kikwete and also to Rakesh Rajani, um, who's taking over, as you heard earlier, as uh, being the co-chair uh, for civil society um, in the uh, OGP. Could I start off by asking you, uh, President Kikwete, um, why open government partnership is important for Tanzania in terms of your government and for the people of Tanzania? Why does it make a difference? Well, uh, th thank you, thank you, Raghi. First, let me congratulate my countrymen here <laughs> for assuming the chair. He's going to be holding your feet to the fire, you realize that? <laughs> Not necessarily so. <laughs> He's going to hold the feet to the fire of all the 61 member states. <laughs> Of course, uh, transparency, openness, and accountability are, are critical both for government and the people. Because when the government is open, the people know what is going on, and they can hold the government accountable, mm -hmm. and the government has the urge to deliver. But apart from causing you um, dare I say, some headaches and holding you to account, does it actually produce real concrete results in terms of efficiency, in terms, do people actually see a benefit from this, from this level of transparency? Well, first, let, let me give you the assurance that it does not give me any headache. <laughs> <laughs> because one of the things that has been troubling me since becoming president is really is to, first, for me, to know exactly what is going on in government. Mm -hmm. Because you may have a plan you may have a plan and uh, you may just believe that things are happening while well, actually nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. So one, one, uh, openness in the sense also gives me, gives me the opportunity really to know what point. is going on mm -hmm. in the various departments of government. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we in government are there for the people. Mm -hmm. And if, if the people know exactly what is going on and if people tell us what they want us to do, mm -hmm. And if the people are not happy with what you are doing and they, they get the opportunity to tell us, mm. that's healthy. Michael Shannon, you've been involved in uh, open government uh, partnership right from the, from the beginning. Um, what's your motivation and why are you so passionate uh, about this initiative from a grassroots point of view? I think OGP is about getting things done for people. You know, throughout the world, uh, there's a crisis in governance. Uh, the, lev the level of confidence that citizens have in their governments to deliver, in their governments to work for them, has been very low. So there's, you know, what you can do is give up on government and kind of shout on the margins. But I think we know through history that the way to get things done is with government. And what OGP does is says to government, look, if you want to succeed, the way you will succeed better is, as President Kikweta said, by listening to people, by engaging with people, by wanting honesty. You know, a good leader is the one who wants to hear not only the good news, but the bad news. Mm -hmm. And also on the part of civil society, it's, we also have a crisis. Um, if you look at the evidence, many, many people around the world don't look to organize civil society to fulfill their aspirations. So we also have a challenge to be more rooted, to listen more to people's aspirations, and play that brokering role with government in order to get very practical life and death things done. One of the important themes uh, uh, from this summit and from the whole uh, OGP uh, movement is protecting the space for civil society groups and for activists in order to be able to help in the process of transparency. What can governments do, what can your government do in order to help people like Rakesh and other activists if this process is so important? Mm. Well, uh, Rakesh can, 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 can testify, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, we, we give a lot of space to, to the civil society. We, we allow them to operate. We, 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 we don't fight them. Uh, of course, there are areas where we, we, we may have differences, sure. uh, but when we have differences, we say, no, no, you could have done this. So we've given, because we, 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 also, we also need this, this, this voice. You know, there is the official voice, and then there is the people's voice, but you know, there's the, the, the voice of a third party, mm. uh, but not a third party in the sense of we completely an outsider, he's one of you, mm. but speaking from, from a point of greater independence, greater independence of telling you exactly what, what is not happening. As I, as I said, one of my main preoccupations has been really to see the government deliver, government deliver. And 
when I visited Indonesia, when we had the last Chogam summit in, in, in mm -hmm. Indonesia, and Prime Minister Najib was, was generous enough to, to brief us on what they have been, what they've been doing in government uh, on delivery. Uh, it impressed me a lot. I, I, I asked for private tuition. <laughs> And, I, and, and, the, and then I, I, I got the opportunity of, of getting a briefing, a proper briefing. And then we, I asked for, for his people to come and work with us to, to, develop, the, to develop the system. And then we, 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 we've been starting to develop this system. But the good thing of it is we started first with, we chose six sectors to begin with. Um, and then in each of these sectors, the first thing we did was do an in-depth analysis of the situation in those three sectors, in, in those six sectors, what are the challenges? And in this, we we when you say sectors, you're talking about some I mean, things like yeah, we, agriculture. We, yeah, we, 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 we had agriculture, we had uh, energy, mm -hmm. we had health, we had education, uh, we had infrastructure, and we had government revenue. Right. Yes. But what we did really, we had an in-depth uh, discussion. First, an evaluation of the challenges in these sectors. What are the issues? And in this evaluation, it, it was not confined to government bureaucrats. Mm. It involved the civil society. Mm -hmm. He was very active in the education, in the, yeah. education the education sector. He has always been. It involved the common people. It, it, it involved major players, private sector players. It involved government officials. So they had a, an in-depth analysis of, of the challenges in each sector. They came up with, 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 exact, with the concrete proposals on what needs to be done in, in each of those sectors. And then we, have, we factored that in our budget. In fact, last year we tried, but because we, the process went concurrently when we were doing the budget processes. But in this, in, in, in this year's budget, mm. then we were able to factor what was, what, what, what was, was proposed. So you, you can see, my, my concern has been the government has to deliver. Mm. What are the issues and how do we deliver? So and it's easier to work with people. In yeah, it is, it, it is always easier because when you work with this, you know, the common people and the, the players in the actor, you know exactly what are the issues, what, what they need to be done. Then we came up with a set of issues. For example, in education, they came up with, with nine proposals. Okay. And we think if we implement those. Well, let me ask Rakesh, I mean, what, how did this process, I mean, pan out in terms of your participation and participation of other civil groups? I think, as the president has said, what was unusual and, and I think very healthy is that it not only involved government bureaucrats, it involved civil society, involved mm -hmm. academics. So my sense is, on, on the whole, we have a good set of priorities to work on. Mm -hmm. But of course, the key question now is delivery. Right. And, and I think uh, you know, we have a good set of plans. The big, big question is, will we deliver? Will the government deliver? And I think in order to do that, the OGP principles are going to be really critical. One thing, as the president has emphasized, is how do we know whether things are working? We need to have very good feedback and we have very good data systems. The other thing that I think the, the government in Tanzania, as other countries, need to realize is that good ideas come often from outside yeah. government. Mm. So we have to change our culture. You know, we've, we've inherited, perhaps from our old colonial masters in Tanzania, a way of thing, doing government that is focused on secrecy, that is focused on, you know, <laughs> we have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> So we need to transform that. Who, who are the British for that? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's a key question. I mean, one, of the, one of the things that, um, I mean, both Francis uh, Maud and, and, and the Prime Minister were very keen to talk about uh, and have talked about is that um, countries come with flagship commitments to, to, to keep mm -hmm. raising the, the, the bar of, uh, of, of OGP so that one isn't just stuck with previous sort of commitments, that you keep them moving. What is your flagship commitment that you brought to life? Well, the, the flagship commitment we are bringing this time is that we, we are now working on enacting a freedom to information law. We are working on that one. We think uh, by April, April, April next year, the parliament will, 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 will send to parliament this bill and have it enacted. It's, um, it's, it's now giving the rights of the common man, of the common Tanzanian citizen now, the right to have information from government. We are not talking only of the freedom of the press, it's always there, it, it, has, it has been there, but now we are talking of the people, the government becoming more open, 
people having greater access to information and, and when they ask for this information, they should not be seen as, uh, as trying to go to venture into territories which are not theirs. Of course, does this, does this mean, I mean, not just budgets? I mean, what, what does it involve? Budgets of departments? Budgets of departments? Of course, we, we will always the, leave the domains of, of, of security and separate as, 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 as they are. You know, you cannot say everything has got to be open. Now, if, if, we, have, if we have some information, some leads that there, there are terrorists somewhere planning, you cannot say, now we have a lead that there is a terrorist. We, we, we have to follow this sure. quiet, quietly, mm. secretly. When you, you, when you apprehend them, then there, that, that's, that's when you become public. But at least people, if people want information on, on, how, on how medicines are distributed, if people want information about budgets, the, the budget, budgets to their primary school, they, they should have the right to, to, to know this. Uh, their budgets about their, when are they going to get their water supply? When, these are issues that we need, that they have to have the right to, to get. Rakesh, what's your reaction to that? I think this is brilliant news. Uh, it's one of the best things I've heard President Kikwete say on. If we achieve this, I think it will be wonderful. <laughs> so we, we want to make sure this comes, and it's a progressive law. Let me, allow me, Raghi, to say three, three points. Mm. First, I think what this does is institutionalizes the right to information. It doesn't depend on us having a progressive uh, president or progressive minister, Chikawe, who's leading this, but it, it, it institutionalizes in law so that across government and so on, people know. I think that's important. The second point is it sets a new norm. Mm. It sets a new norm on the relationship between state and citizens, and that is really, really important. And it's, what is important also is to have the mechanisms to realize that new norm. So the devil will be in the details. What are the institutions that are done? The good news is there are countries in the world, uh, India, South Africa, Mexico, and others where we can learn from. We are not, we're not starting from scratch. And the third point, and I think the most exciting over the long term, is if we do this right, it creates new possibilities mm. of governments and citizens to come together to realize common goals. And in a way that I think will be much more effective than some of the reforms we've been doing, like local government reforms. This will actually make the rubber hit the road. Mm. And I think that's really powerful. So we will work with the president and his team to make sure we have a world-class, brilliant law. We will involve Rakesh. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. One of the things, though, that's very interesting, um, uh, and just observing the two of you, you're, you're both Tanzanian, and, and there's been I'm uh, just speaking personally, I mean, in, in the past, in, 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 in Africa, and certainly in terms of my own sort of country in, uh, in Somalia, there's been a sense in which politicians and bureaucrats are, are distant. They're on a sort of plinth of a statue, and their sense of their accountability is, has been very, very difficult. But seeing you two on the stage together, but also talking about how you're working effectively together, changes that kind of culture, doesn't it? Well... Essentially, we, we, we are condemned to be together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, we, we have to work together because he's working with a civil society. They are making a, a useful contribution to, to how how a country should be governed, how how issues should be should be managed in in the country. We, we cannot take offence for that, definitely, and. All of us are there to, to, to help at the end of the day the, 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 the people or the people of Tanzania. So definitely, as I'm saying, we, we have to be together. Uh, we cannot choose to, to, to do otherwise. That could be another phrase that Prime Minister Cameron could borrow from you, in addition to virus and being, <laughs> and being condemned to work together. <laughs> with the, <laughs> we've got to get Francis to suggest that to him a bit later. President Kikwete and Rakesh Rajana, thank you very much thank for you. you for very enlightening <laughs>